Nancy Pierce. I'm a photojournalist working out of Charlotte, North Carolina, have been for about 40 years. And for 30 of those years, I've photographed the Unitarian Universalist Association's General Assembly. As a photographer, I'm silent most of the time. I'm listening to what's going on, trying to give context, but I can't interact. And I'm in and out of a lot of concurrent sessions, a lot of seminars, I'm privy to a lot of conversations between and among people. What I try to do is capture a photograph first that's quite benign. It, it might be from a distance. It might not actually show the person or it might not actually show the sensitive situation. It just suggests it. But then I find myself empowered by the camera in front of my face, which is shielding me. It's like a shield and getting closer and closer and closer. And eventually I do take that photograph. This urge to get a great photograph kind of overcomes the urge to give people their privacy sometimes. I'm gonna retire and not really have settled with that because I do think people deserve privacy. I do remember at one General Assembly, a woman came up to me and she said, I've been watching you work and you're like a shapeshifter, the way you do things. And you know, you blend in, you always wear black and you just move around and you go up and down and, and then she said, it must be hard on your body. And then she handed me a card and she was a chiropractor. <laughs> and she said, if you ever need a consult, you know, just call me up. I'll just say you're the, remind me you're the General Assembly photographer and I'll talk with you. My favorite General Assembly moments are gonna be the ones where there was visuals that just couldn't be bad, such as the Phoenix General Assembly where there was the candlelight vigil outside of um, Sheriff Joe Arpaio's tent city and where then President um, Peter Morales and soon to be President Susan Frederick Gray uh, were speakers. I would say that 1996 in Indianapolis was one that I remembered a lot about. I believe it was the first General Assembly that was centered around youth and that made it just have an incredible energy. The youth were out in the middle of the night playing in the fountains and they were everywhere. They had a session called condom art. And so during that entire general assembly, the young people were walking around doing everything that they normally do, but they, their jewelry, their little ties, their hair ties, their earrings were all made out of condoms. And the whole point was to advance their um, safe sex, where condoms were not something to be embarrassed about or to joke about or to be secretive about. They were something that is very useful. And I thought it was brilliant. I really thought it was brilliant. One other thing I remember about 1996 is the General Assembly passed a resolution that year that was in support of marriage equality. And this was eight years before Massachusetts became the first state in the United States to make marriage between same-sex couples legal. The president, Reverend John Burens, called uh, same-sex couples to come up on stage and everybody posed for a portrait that I took up, up from above, this whole group of people. This was the first religious denomination to be proactive about supporting marriage equality. It was another 19 years before the U.S. Supreme Court decision came down that made same-sex marriage legal. My understanding is that at General Assembly, there's an attempt to join with a local advocacy group in every city. In Columbus, it had to do with boycott Wendy's. In Cleveland, it was about the Cleveland Indians. The assembly marched through downtown with the banner in the pouring rain, in the absolute pouring rain. <laughs> it felt like a news photographer. You have to get the picture no matter what. Bottom line, I'm turning 70 and I always said I would work until 70. And so that's why I'm retiring. I didn't start out to be a photographer. I started out to be a writer and ended up in photography. And it's it's been a, a really good career. Um, but I think it is time for me to lay down the camera. 
for a year, I'm not going to take a single frame. It's an exercise. But I will be in my retirement, I will be organizing my archive. UNC Charlotte is going to carry the Nancy Pierce photo archive. My work goes back to the early 80s in North Carolina in the region. And I have a lot of work that is unique because I did a lot of news magazine photography in the 80s and 90s. So I'll be working on that archive and I'm kind of afraid that's going to be a rabbit hole. <laughs> but I'll do what I can. So here we are at the convention center in Pittsburgh where I just finished photographing the UUA General Assembly for the very last time. I feel like I'm still figuring it out. I'm still figuring out how to do my job. And I've been doing it for 47 years and now it's over and I haven't figured it out really. But I mean, that's a microcosm of life really. I found myself saying to myself a lot this last week during GA, um, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. And what I'm referring to is when I did something that maybe I think later I shouldn't have done, you know, I think I shouldn't have said that. Or, or some kind of software or hardware issue that I've just caught on to and I'm thinking, oh great, I now know it, or I need to figure this out. But every time something like that came up, the only thing I could say is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore. And of course, that brings up the possibility that it might never have mattered, actually. I should just have forgiven myself. But here we are. You know, as a photographer, I capture moments. That's what it's all about, is capturing moments. But I think it it's, makes us forget how to live in the moments. I need to go back to living in the moments and get out of that habit of feeling like I need to capture them. I'm Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, so.